Hi everyone, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the BeamerTech Comfort Access System. And you know what that means? We have to switch out the door handles. Let's get started. Now some of you may have seen my other comfort access video in which we don't need to switch out the door handles and it works more on a proximity sensor with your key. However, some of the problems that I found out with that system is that it doesn't always accurately detect the key. Most of the times I had troubles going to the trunk as well as on the passenger side of the car. The other thing that I didn't like too much about that system is that if you sit in your car after you turn it off, the horn will honk three times. So if you're waiting in the car a lot, or if you're working on the car, it might not be the best system for you. However, if you're one of those people who just wants a comfort access system, doesn't take a lot of passengers, and you don't plan to work on your car personally, that system might be better for you and it's actually more cost effective. But because I do a lot of work on this car myself, I prefer the comfort access system from Beamer Tech. Now with that said, let's take a look at some of the things that are gonna help us out with this install. Now the tools that are gonna make this job a whole lot easier are going to be a ratchet set, some plastic trim tool pieces, this magnetic grabber is gonna be super useful when we're transferring the wires from the driver's side to the passenger side. Some drill bits, a drill, a heat gun, as well as some gloves. Coming over to the comfort access system, we can see that we have the two door handles, the wires that are going to connect to the two handles, which will feed into the respective wiring harnesses through the car. The central wiring harness, which also connects for your mirrors, the trunk antenna, the wiring harness that collects the antenna information and feeds it into the brain of the system. And of course, the overall brain of the unit right here. And you can tell that it's actually for the two series because it's listed there. And this is also where your dip switches are located. To get access to the dip switch, there are tabs on the top of the box. Use a pick tool to poke it out. And then you have three on the bottom. Slide out. And on the top corner, you can see the dip switches right there. And I'll list a picture for you right now so that you can determine what switches you want on or off for your car. Now that the dip switches are set the way that you want them, slide the component back in. And let's proceed with the install. Since we're dealing with electronics, is disconnect the battery, take your 10 millimeter wrench, undo the negative terminal at the battery, and to ensure it doesn't come back up, I just like to leave a piece of cardboard right there. Now it's also good to put something like a tie or a towel on the trunk latch so that it doesn't fall and lock you out of your car. Now from the top of the car, we're actually going to remove this plastic trim that's around the rear view mirror. And the way that you do that is just pull it apart like that. And for frame of reference, there's actually locking pins all along the grooves here, but mainly it inserts into the rear view mirror on these two pins here. So all that we really did was just come to the side and kind of bend it down. So it's almost like we broke it in half, but it's meant to be that way. Once the plastic trim piece is out of the way, it'll give you access to this component right here. Now, in order to undo it, there is just a small plastic locking mechanism that you can push down with your fingers and slide up. Take your central locking mechanism that has these two components in there and connect it directly to that channel and it will act as a bypass. Insert that back into place. And then this can just be tucked and hidden in the plastic component when we put it back on. So this extra wiring that we have here, we can just tuck it into the upper column and we'll deal with it in just a second. And now we can slide back in the plastic trim to cover up all of those wires. Now we just have to tuck the central wiring system into the headliner. For that, we can just use a plastic trim tool like this. And then when we get to the center column here, tuck it into the corner and let it wrap around. Now that we get into here, because what we want to do is to drop it along this portion of the pillar, just pull down on the weather stripping and allow it to fall into place. And now that we have some of it in, just put back the weather stripping. But don't push it in all the way because we still have to take care of the bottom portion. Now in order to have access to this panel right over here, we need to first remove this trim piece. All that you do is just get your fingers underneath on this side 
and lift up. Pull up on the weather stripping here. And now this component, just dig your fingers in on the side over here and wiggle it out. Now we can see that our central wiring system dropped in perfectly because what we need access to is just behind this black panel here. We have a T20 torque screw that we have to take out. And then it just slides on out. Now that we have the plastic cover off, what we're going to do is insert our wire intermediates right here on this black clip on the top, as well as this white clip here on the bottom. And then we also have to reinsert a fuse on number four over here. But since this bottom white fuse is the hardest to get to, let's do that first. To do that, we simply use a pick tool to push down on the locking mechanism and lift up on that tab and it guides right on out. Take our Beamer Tech wiring harness and put it in and it only goes in one way, so don't worry about getting it wrong. Use the locking mechanism to make sure that it seals correctly to connect the black cable, which is in between the blue and the white connection on the top of this panel. Push in the locking mechanism, lift up on the lever, pull it out, connect our Beamer Tech wiring harness, lock it down. I found it was a whole lot easier if I just remove this trim piece, remove the 10 millimeter bolts right there, as well as right there. Then it's held in by two clips there and there. So just go ahead, take it out of the way. Now, as you can see, I did remove the electrical board. All that you have to do is remove about eight wiring harnesses. Three on the very top, one just below that, three below that middle one, and then one at the very bottom right there. After you've done all of that, there's a T20 torque, this long bolt here that you have to remove and then the whole board just comes right on out. And removing this whole electrical board, just so that you can see exactly where we're at here, is on the side panel here, we do have to attach our ground, which is that black wire that's leading from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screw. In order to get access to it, don't go through this foam panel here. Instead, come through the side and use a very short screwdriver to go through that opening hole right there. If you peel this down, you can actually see the top of a torque screw right there. And this cutout is actually meant to be here because it hooks on to that ledge, which holds it into place. Now we're gonna start working on the electrical components that feed through the door. Looking at this component, we have to lift up on the lever here, just like that, in order to release it from its connection. And we're gonna pull it on the other side of the hinge this portion of the harness, you just have to push on the top as well as the bottom to slide it into the car. Then we simply reach in to the interior of the car so that we can pull out the one that has this blue connection piece attached to it. Detach this blue cover. Just use a pick tool in order to lift up off the tab here and do the same on the other side. And then release this wiring harness from its housing by simply pushing up and pulling it out. Now what we have to do here is look to make sure that we have four slots on here for the female connection that will line up into four slots on this side for the male connection. And so if we look closely at the top of this wiring connection, we can see that we have four slots at the top there that are free for us to use. And on the door side, we can see that those same four connections are also open on this side. So this is actually a very, very good spot for us to use our connection pins. Now, before we insert the male pins, we wanna make sure that we're using the black connection here for the passenger side doors. The one for the red is meant for the driver's side. On the opposite end of this wiring harness, we have the four male pin connections. And the easiest way for me to remember from top to bottom is going to be the black wire followed by the white wire with the black line, the all white wire, and then the red wire. For my car, I'm gonna use the farthest outer upper corner. First, we have the black wire. Make sure you hear it snap into place. Followed by the white wire with the black line. And when you're doing this, make sure that the locking mechanism is pointing to the outside because the pins are directional when you put them in. Now we have the white wire, and lastly, the red wire. 
Now make sure to line it up on the wiring harness that feeds in from the door. But actually before doing that, we have to remove this door panel first. So what we have to do is to get underneath this door panel, so use your plastic trim tool piece right here. And if you need any of the tools, I'm gonna list them in the link down below. With the door handle exposed, you'll be able to see the two T20 Torx screws that we have to remove right here. Now that this trim piece is off, let's remove the one around the actual door handle. Lift up here, and it will glide right on out. To reveal a T20 Torx screw, place it off to the side. Let's start popping off the door trim. And then once you have some leverage, you can just use your hands to start pulling it out. However, there are some connections that you will want to look out for. One of them is right here for the door latch. And to release it, just lift up on this pin right here and pull it off. Now this wire right here, all that you do is look at where it's connected, give it a pinch and allow it to come out. The last wire that we have down here, we actually have to reach further down inside here. You'll have to feel it and, and pop out this connection piece that holds it into place here. But we're not free yet. We have one more connection piece that needs to be slid out over here. Now we have to undo this foam panel here and it's just held in by some adhesive. So let's just use a heat gun to loosen things up. And now we have to remove the corner weather stripping. Just peel it back a little bit in order to reveal to us this oval hole right here. Into that hole, if you take a closer look, you'll be able to see the small Allen bolt that we have to remove. That holds in the smaller portion of the door handle, which we're about to remove. Now this Allen head is 532s or a in metric. And situations like this is why I like to have this pole here with me because I can reach in and try to grab that Allen head. And there we go. Slide out that component. To release the door from its catch, Ooh, that came out pretty easily. This part slides on out. This is what we're gonna replace. Right here, I'm going to use a hook in order to bring that latch a little closer. You see that piece that's moving right there? It's actually offset just a little bit. And what you wanna do here is align this portion of the door handle. That way it locks in these two grooves and holds the door handle into place. The opposite side will simply funnel this wire and this open portion right here actually just locks in on a pivoting point and it lines up very, very smoothly. So even if I do that, I can already feel that it's in place. The biggest portion is using the hook to align this door handle. All right, and we're in. Reinsert end of the door handle, put back in this Allen screw. Now to make things a whole lot simpler, since we're gonna go along this wiring path, I wanna follow it all the way through up until the door handle. And that way we ensure that when the windows are going up and down, it doesn't snag on anything. And more importantly, we do not want to feed the wires through the harness with the pin side first. We want to use this connection because it has the hard plastic casing around it to protect the wires and we don't have to worry about anything getting bent. I found that it was a whole lot easier just to pull out this rubber grommet that holds it in place. Now we can just take our wiring harness, bend it. This way it'll allow us to push it through. There we go right there. Now pull through in order to get the wiring harness the way that we need it. And our pins are still intact. Here we are again with our female connections. And remember we had the farthest section with the top being black, the section being white with black, followed by our white connection. And lastly, in the number four position, we have our red connection. Slide that back into place so that it holds the pins in. 
and then pull out any additional slack that you may have here before sliding this back into place. Now feed the rest of the wires into the door before sealing it back up with that rubber grommet. Now we can slide back on this plastic cover before tucking it back over through the door and connecting it all back up. And then once you feed that wire through, don't forget to lift up on this lever and then just allow them to connect. Now this part's easy. Just reach through, grab the cable, connect the wire to the door handle. The pathway I decided that the wire should take should be along the inside of this railing all the way up onto the inside. And now that our wiring's in place, just go ahead and reapply the foam. And it's more or less pressure activated, so just make sure to line it up where you had it before. Now when you're reattaching the door handle, you wanna make sure that this inner component lines up with the silver hooks on the inside of the door lever. Make sure that the door handle is closed, line up the hook, snap it into place, and if you test it like that, you hear it, it's grabbing, so we're good to go. Connect the rest of the wires as you previously had them. Got one down here that needs to be reattached, and this is for the under light fixture on the door handle. And now to place back in the button to the window, our speaker, and all the way at the bottom is our footwell light. And since we're gonna do a test run, we're only gonna pop in a few of the pins just to hold the door in place. In case anything happens, we can take it off a whole lot easier. Now it's time to install the driver's side door handle. And it's pretty much the same procedure. First, we're going to remove the door handle trim, then the trim around the door lever, removing the five torque screws, and then using a plastic trim tool to remove the door panel, which will give us access to the connections on the door. First, we're gonna remove the door lever connection, the switch that connects the window, as well as the mirrors, the speaker, as well as the footwell light. Then using a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive that holds in the foam around the door. We're gonna do the same thing, lift up on the weather stripping, undo the Allen head, keep it in a safe place. Now this locking mechanism, because it is an actual lock, takes a little bit more effort because you release the whole cylinder. Slide the handle out and Place in your new Beamer Tech handle. Wires first, hook second. Using your pick tool, attach the latch to the handle. Then reinsert our locking mechanism. Do a test grab and then reinsert the Allen screw. Going back in. Push back in the weather stripping. Just like before, we had to lift up on this lever, wiggle it out before we could loosen it from its other connection on the inside of the car. And now that we have access to it, we can start connecting our female wiring harness. Firstly, we should undo this rubber grommet here so that feeding these wires becomes a whole lot easier. Lifting up on the connector to unlock it, it comes out and then we can slide that rubber grommet around a little bit to make some room for our wiring harness. Remember that we wanna put in the plastic capsulated end first, that way we don't damage any of our pin connections. The way that I like to do this is just by doing it in a fold and pushing it through. If you need to, you can even use a pick tool to try and grab it out. And everything is still intact. Pull this all the way through now. All that we wanna do at this point is connect this end to the door handle. Feed it through the same way that its neighboring wire harness goes in, similar to how we did on the passenger side. Passing through all along this inner railing right here. That railing will actually meet where that rubber grommet feeds into. You can see the black pieces of electrical tape there and there 
that hold in the wiring which will similarly feed up into that crevice there. And good thing that we have those plastic pins there, which we can push the wiring on the opposite side. And those pins are what's going to hold it in place. Now, when we look at it, we actually have another railing right there. And that red wire that you see feeds up through that channel and allows it to connect to the other white connector which is attached to the door handle. Now we have to remove the footwell on the driver side, which is secured by a Phillips head. Now we can start taking out the trim. Lift up on the weather stripping here. And there's one more Phillips head holding this plastic trim in place. Be careful not to just pull it out because you do have your trunk release connected still so that you don't pull any of those wires there we see our trunk release just give it a good pinch and put it off to the side now that we have the trim off we have to remove this component in order to give us access to that wiring harness these are held in by just a couple of t20 torque screws and just be careful because these screws are securing your hood latch as well as your OBD2 connection. So be very careful here to not strain any of those lines. But as soon as you're done, give the wiring harness on the opposite end a pinch on the locking mechanism. Take off the blue cover, give you access to the pins. And now we need to match up our connectors and make sure that the pins are gonna line up all the same. So fortunately for us, the top four pins on the outer corner on this component, as well as this component, end up matching just like they did on the passenger side. So we can go ahead and connect them the same way. So the top outer corner, we're gonna go by the same combination of black on the top, the white with the black stripe, followed by the white. And in the number four position, we have the red connection. Slide it back in, locks into place. Give the wiring harness over here a nice little tug. Now the slack on this is a whole lot less than the other ones. And because it's so much tighter, I'm gonna go from the bottom up. And from bottom to top, we had red going in first, then the all white wire, the white with a black stripe, and the wire at the very top is the all black wire. Let's just slip on our blue cover right now. Make sure to put this connection through without tugging on the OBD2 connection. Now that the pins are aligned, we just have to put the connector back in. Now this part can be a little tricky, but just push it through. And to re-engage this locking component, all that we do is put it in and slide it down. Slide the locking mechanism back up, join the two connections, and push down. Take the rubber grommet that we removed and reattach it to the door. Let's put back up our foam sound deadening material. All the connections onto our door handle. And remember that we want this inner component, the darker one on the inside, to line up with the hooks on the inside of the door handle. So make sure that the grooves line up and snap it in. And we can see right there that it's working. Now for the rest of the connections, our window switch, which we have to lock down with this gray lever. The speaker component. And lastly, down here we have our footwell light. Now let's just bang in a few of the pins to hold it in place. Now the next thing we have to do is to bring this red connector over onto the passenger side where it will connect to the brain of the comfort access system. The way that we do that is by feeding the wire up through the footwell and you're gonna have to disassemble this vent. Take a look into there. When you feed the wire through the footwell, it ends up right about there. You're gonna loop it underneath what I call the sunglass box on your driver's side and then let it feed underneath the steering wheel and underneath is this little like leatherette piece right here that covers that inside panel so just feed the wiring through and then from here we can fish that over through the vent just dig your fingers in underneath pop it out and there's two connections one 
here at the top and one right here. We can actually reach in and with one hand under the steering wheel, feed the wire so that it passes through. I've already positioned my grabber from the passenger side vent. And when we pull this wire through, you'll see how I fed it. All that I will do is extend the claw and let it grab onto the wire. And as you can see, this is how I positioned the claw to just go through that vent. So we're just gonna pull this all the way through. Now let's feed this wire down to the passenger footwell. We made it. Now we have to hook back up our circuit board. This bottom connection is what we're gonna put in first. Push in the red locking pin. So we can put in this giant torque screw. And now we can put in our connections. This bottom black one with the black lever goes first. Followed by the black connection with the white lever. Then we can put in this middle connection right here. And remember our new white connection at the bottom that we got from Beamer Tech. Put that in on the far bottom side. Next up on the top, we're gonna put in our white connection. The black one that we have from Beamer Tech goes in right next to it. In the top corner, is our blue connector. Then all we do is take this chunk of wiring harness and push it down here into this empty space. This actually fits nicely on the top over here. That way the carpet still sits flush once everything is bolted back down. Now we next have to install our fuse connector which goes into fuse section number four which ends up being this top green fuse that I pulled out slightly right here. This fuse connection will only work if you take your 30 amp fuse that you previously had in slot number four and put it in the empty spot. Only then, once you insert it back into slot number four, will the entire system work. So if for some reason, your passenger side window does not fold up and down, or if the system just doesn't work at all, it's because you haven't reattached the 30 amp fuse to the empty section of the fuse connector. And although there is a bit of extra cabling there that does make it somewhat tight, it'll all fit. Now let's make our connections. Red is for the driver's side, black for the passenger side, and this clear one is for the trunk, which I'll show you the pathway once we're done with our testing. And now to attach everything to the brain of the system, don't worry, they only go in one way. So that's for our antennas. This is for our wiring harness. It's time for us to do our first test. Now try to make it as dark as I could to emphasize the lights here. You should be able to see a blue as well as a red light on the circuit board. This is where your dip switches are. Now if the lights are on, that means the system should be working. And again, if you don't have the 30 amp fuse in that fuse connector, these lights won't even be on. So if they're on, you should be good to go and proceed with the rest of your testing. Make sure that it locks and unlocks. And if it does, we can start snugging everything down. Now that everything's good, let's go ahead and button all of this up. Slide in our control panel. Now we can take this access wires that we have down here and tuck it into this carpeting area because there's actually a lot of space down here. Now the circuit board for the comfort access actually slides in and holds there quite nicely without even any double-sided tape. So just in case I need to change anything later on, I'm just gonna leave it like that. And because we're going to put in the footwell, it should hold it very much into place. Slide in our footwell and make sure that it grabs onto the pins. Now we can reconnect our light and then slot this in. So now let's put back in our 10 millimeter bolts. One more on this side. Just align the pins in the door. 
screw back in the T20 torque screws. The trim around the door handle. Following it up by putting in the trim piece down here before locking it into place. Now as for our trunk antenna, that clear connection actually feeds into this skinny line which follows underneath the carpeting on the passenger side all the way up. You can see some more of it right here. We're gonna tuck it actually into this crevice here along the whole arm and then pass it through the seat cushion into the trunk. But before we get into the trunk, you're gonna have to take a pick tool, remove the plastic cover that's on this T40 Torx screw in order to take it out. Now in order to release some of the trunk liner, we have to take off some of this weather stripping. So just lift up and guide it out. Using this pin as an example, use a pick tool to lift up on the pin and then you can use it for leverage and pull out the remainder of the pin. There's three more on this plastic trunk liner. And then lift it up and off. In this grocery bag hook is the same concept. Pick tool to release the inner pin, leverage to pull out the rest of it. Then we have to remove this inner plastic component. We're gonna push back some of this liner right here and you can see this is where we placed our antenna with some double-sided tape. Taking a closer look, we can see that this lip is right where the antenna goes. Imagine the double-sided tape is on and it fits right into that groove very nicely. So that's where I'm gonna put it. But this is a time where you should test out the range of this antenna for your trunk, depending on where you're gonna be approaching the trunk most of the time. Now with the antenna installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our hooks to lock it into place, as well as our T40 trunk hook. Put back on the plastic cap. Now let's reinsert our plastic trunk trim. Put in our four plastic rivets. One, two, three, four. Then just realign the weather stripping. And the last thing on the passenger side is to put in this plastic trim piece. Make sure that the part that's gonna be receiving it is in alignment here. And snapping them into place. And now let's finish up on the driver's side. We have to put in those same five torque screws. handle and then the trim for the door lever now we just have to secure our hood latch release as well as our OBD2 connection putting in the 20 torque screws attach the trunk release now this is the same thing as the other side where we have to make sure that the pins line up into their holes that way this panel doesn't come loose or rattle. And now we can put in our hood latch. Finishing touch for the driver's side. Put in the plastic molding. Line up the inserts before pressing them in. And just like that, you have your comfort access system from Beamer Tech all installed. If it worked, again, you should just be able to touch the handle to unlock and then touch the ridges portion in order to lock the car. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.